Hello again, my little conscripts, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about 10th edition and what units you can buy to prepare yourself for the new edition of 40k. This video is designed to help all 40k players, new and old, grizzled veteran or fresh faced conscript. It doesn't matter what faction you collect, whether it's Guard or Tyranids or Space Marines, whether you believe the Emperor has two arms or he has three. You see, I'm going to share with you some golden rules on what kind of units to buy in preparation and what kind of units to avoid as we transition into the new edition. I'm also going to go through each faction 40k and pick out a few examples of what I think are safe bets. All of my advice and my recommended units are going to be based upon my experience playing 40k across many different editions. I started playing back in third and I've continued to play consistently all the way through to ninth edition and now going into 10th almost two decades of 40k. But that's enough of an introduction. Let's whip out our wallets, hide the receipts from our wives, and dive right into today's episode. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna sound pretty contradictory to the theme of this video. But I have to be honest, and I have to give you guys the best possible advice and the best possible guidance. The most sensible thing you can do right now is put your wallet away and wait and see. We don't have the full picture of 10th edition yet. Anyone out there who is saying go out and buy a dozen of X unit is speaking out of their ass. We don't know what the mayor's going to be. We don't know what the most powerful date sheet's going to be. We don't even know how all the missions are going to work just yet. Anything you buy now is inherently going to be risky. We also know that Games Workshop has a bit of a tendency to randomly discontinue certain products. You could go out there now and buy a bunch of units, and some of them may not even be usable in 10th edition. The best thing you can do is just wait. Be patient, and when 10th edition comes out, you'll have the full picture. The whole thing is going to get instantly dissected by the power of the internet. And very quickly, in 24 hours, you'll know what the best units are to buy. Now, I appreciate that's a bit of a weird way to start a video about buying 40k. We all want to get hyped up and then here's this sensible motherfucker telling us, oh, you know, be frugal. And there probably should be as a content creator being like, oh, yeah, buy the most expensive box set. Also, use my affiliate link down below and all that kind of stuff. But I just have to be true to myself and I want to be honest with you guys and I want to set the tone of this video so that going forward you know that I am giving you the best possible advice that I can. Having said all that there is an advantage to buying ahead of the new edition. There's a number of reasons why you may not want to wait. The first one is simply you're excited. The new edition has been announced. You want to start building and getting your models ready and it's a case of you might not have any models right now and you might be thinking well i want to be ready so that when 10th edition drops i can just jump straight into the game and i can play it from day one that is absolutely fine perfectly admirable very much a in some ways sensible way to approach it as a new player you're not worried about exactly what you're going to buy you just want to make sure you've got some half decent units so that when the game gets going you can be there from the start line there is also another very real world reason why you might want to start getting your models together now instead of waiting. And that is the GW logistics chain. Anyone who's been part of 40k for any length of time, even just a short one, is going to be acutely aware of the fact that they cannot meet the demand. There's a whole host of reasons why this is the case. GW keeps a lot of its manufacturing in the UK. They own their own factory and that thing has just been running at complete capacity for years at this point. And then you've also got the fact that 40k has exploded in popularity. So the general demand coming from the consumers is much, much higher than it has been in the past. And lastly, with this explosion in popularity, 
you have got quite a lot of scalpers who are quickly hoovering up as many boxes as possible and then shoving them on eBay for an inflated price. I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, I am not trying to create a sense of FOMO. I'm not a GW shill. I don't have an agreement with them. I've never signed the NDA. This is just simply the sad reality of the situation. If you wait until 10th edition, there is a chance that the models that you want to get will not be available and they may take a long time to come back in stock. Or you may end up having to spend quite a lot more money than you were planning on buying them from third party retailers or scalpers. I hope you can all see that I've done my best to try and fairly and in the most balanced possible way present both opening statements there. And it's now up to you as a listener which path you want to take. But I'm assuming if you're still listening to this video, then you are interested in getting some models and starting to build your army for 10th. So the first golden rule that I want to share with you is make sure you are buying your staple units, the bread and butter of your faction. These are the units that are synonymous with your faction, the quintessential ones, the squads that when someone mentions the word Space Marine or Guard or Tyranid, the image involuntarily pops into their head. Using Imperial Guard as an example, and don't worry, we'll be getting into the other factions in the latter part of this video, I would describe their staple units as tanks and infantry. Specifically, I would say if you're looking at getting into Guard, you can never go wrong with infantry squads, whether that's Cadians or Death Corps of Krieg or just normal infantry squads, Chimeras, Lemurus Battle Tanks and your heavy weapon teams. These three or four units have been the backbone of the Guard for the last 20 years. They have made up that solid core that has gone into every mixed hybrid Guard army that you've seen on the tabletop. They will allow you to build a force that is both fun, flavorful, and effective. The reason for this is that the Guard have always needed their battle tanks to do the damage to the opponent, even going back to third edition. Your main damage dealers were never your infantry. You needed your Lehman Russes to pound the enemy into dust. You also needed Chimeras to add a little bit of maneuverability. Unlike other factions that had loads of flies and skimmers, Guard didn't really have that, and we could be very slow if we didn't have some dedicated transports. But all of these units were very vulnerable to enemy close combat beasts. And what you needed to try and stop that, stop those enemy units from just coming in and just tearing your tanks to pieces and cutting a hole in the side and pulling the crew out and massacring them, was you needed your infantry screen. This is where you have a decent amount of infantry that go in front of your army. And yeah, they're basically cannon fodder, but it's better that your infantry dies so that your tanks can continue firing and doing damage. This is going to sound a little crazy and it is going to be a 30 second tangent, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. If you wanted to build an addition proof army of guard, it wouldn't matter whether you went back and played third edition and then came back and played 10th, you could use all of these units I would recommend you get about 100 infantry, three Chimeras, four Lehman Russes, and a dozen weapon teams. If you put all of that together and bought a few officer models as well, you would never need to buy another guard model. You might want to, to add a bit of variety, but you'd never need to. The quintessential hybrid guard army consisting of 80 to 100 infantry, three bits of medium arm with your Chimeras, and three or four bits of heavy armor, backed up by some mortar teams has been relevant and usable and even damn effective at times for the last two decades. Now, I bet that there's going to be some veteran players right now who are shaking their heads, disagreeing, or even leaving an angry comment down in the section below. Going, Mordium, why aren't you recommending things like Kazakin? They're really, really good right now. Or what about Rogal Dawns? They're obviously a new unit. They're going to do brilliantly. I'm not recommending those because I consider both of them fringe and specialized units. And they're exactly the kind of thing that you want to avoid. The thing about 40K is the meta is always shifting. If you went back and looked at the competitive armies, the cutting edge that I was using just a year ago, they would be unrecognizable from what I'm using now. Six months ago, Full payload manticores were the must-have unit. Now, they're almost unusably bad. 
About a year ago, I did a video talking about conscripts where I ran 365 of them at a tournament and did really well. Now, conscripts don't even exist. They've been discontinued by Games Workshop. The point I'm trying to make here is that I'm not giving you advice on what is going to be the most competitive unit in 10th edition because we don't know. The advice I'm giving you is what units you can buy, what I recommend you have a look at, which I'm pretty certain is going to make it into 10th. I'm pretty certain no matter what edition you are in, you're going to be able to put it on the tabletop and have fun with it. Metas wax and wane, they come and go, but there's always going to be those units in every faction which are just a solid foundation for you to have in your force. And in a roundabout way, that covers my second golden rule. It's not just about buying the staple, it's about avoiding the fringe. Those units which are overly specialized and kind of occupy a niche. And using guard as an example again, I would avoid things like rattlings, toroxes, scions, and ogrins. Rattlings are very specialized. They are hobbits that infiltrate forward and shoot enemy characters with sniper rifles. Therefore, if snipers are good, then rattlings are good. If snipers are bad, then rattlings stay on the shelf for another edition. And I say another edition because they've kind of historically been more of a fun unit and not one that's ever been overly usable or competitive on the tabletop. You can apply similar kind of arguments to the Ogrins. They're a big combat unit. If combat's decent, then Ogrins will be decent. If combat isn't good, you're not going to want to take Ogrins in your army. Some of you may be surprised at me saying avoid Scions. They're very good at the moment, and they're one of my favorite units of all time. But fundamentally, they are specialized infantry. They deep strike in, they do a lot of damage, but they're relatively fragile. In previous editions, Scions have been fantastic. But also, they've been almost unusably bad as well. So I would say until we have a clearer picture on things like Scions, it's probably best to avoid them and stick to your more generalized infantry like the Acadian Shock Troopers. However, having said that, there is a third golden rule that trumps the first two. It is a platinum rule. It is one rule to rule them all. I feel like I've said rule too much now. Moving to Leon. The platinum rule is you should buy units that you like. Now, this is a very wanky piece of advice that a lot of content creators chuck out all the time when they need a filler episode and they're like, oh, what should I do? Oh, what should you buy for 40k? Oh, just buy the things that you like. Often, it's not really good advice. Of course, I'm going to buy things that I like. It's obvious. I'm not going to buy something I don't like unless I'm a cutthroat, wacker competitive player. And even then, I'm only buying it because I like it because I want to win games with it, okay? The reason I'm giving this advice now is it's not so much buying units that you like. You need to be buying things that you're not going to regret if they end up not being that good in the edition or even being bad. If you're going to buy a unit, you need to be truthful to yourself. If you're looking at that Redemptor Dreadnought and you're going, oh yeah, they're really good right now. I'm going to buy that so I can smash my opponent with it. But you say to yourself, oh, I buy it because I like the Redemptor. I've always been a Redemptor player. Then all you're going to do is set yourself up for some heartache. Look at the unit that you're interested in. Ask yourself, if you have to verbalize it out loud, like I do, I speak to myself a lot. Ask yourself, do I like this? Am I going to want to put this on the tabletop, whether it's good or bad? And if you get that weird feeling in your chest where you're like, um, yeah, sure, totally. If you're not completely convinced, you should avoid it. But if you look at that unit and you go, I absolutely love that unit. I need to have that in my life. I don't care that Mordian just told me that Rattling's a dog shit. I need to have 15, nay, 50 of them in my army. But you can only take 15 in an army. I don't care. I need 50 of them because I like them. If that's the level of your conviction, then just buy that unit because you're not going to care if it's good or bad. And you're going to have fun just building it and painting it and putting it on the tabletop. And you don't care if it dies because you were just having a good time with the whole experience that comes with that unit and not just playing it. But now that I've given you some very generic overarching advice, let's get into the specifics for each faction. What units would I recommend for each army of 40k going into 10th edition? 
Now, normally I would start off with guard. This is a guard focused channel, but I feel like I've already covered those in the previous part of the video. So instead, we're going to move on to the Emperor's second finest faction, the Space Marines. When it comes to the Adeptus Astartes, there's one general bit of advice I would start off with, which is avoid anything firstborn. Games Workshop is clearly in the very long process of merging the Firstborn and the Primaris together. Eventually, there won't be any Firstborn. There won't be any of those old models left, and it's all going to be Primaris stuff, and they're just not going to call it Primaris anymore. So bear that in mind. Avoid things like even generic infantry, like tactical squads. I wouldn't go for them now. Anything Firstborn, wait until the 10th is out. Wait until we see what the fate of the OG Marines is. And then if they're still good and they're still around, then you can get them. With that established, I would recommend three units for budding Space Marine players. Lieutenants, Redemptor Dreadnoughts, and Intercessors. Intercessors are just your basic infantry. You can't get a more bread and butter unit for your Space Marine army. You probably don't want to end up buying hundreds of them, but if you're looking at getting into Space Marines for the first time, then buying a box or two of Intercessors is a pretty safe bet even if you end up with a few more than you intended and you've got a few spare, they're also a brilliant template that you convert them into other marine infantry. For example, I have loads of incestors in my Black Templar army, but I've converted them all over to Crusaders. Red Noughts in general are one of the most iconic units you can get for your marines. And so that's why I'm suggesting the Redemptor. Some people might be surprised that I'm suggesting this unit, especially take into account that we are getting a new Dreadnought with the Leviathan box set. But I don't see the Redemptor as competing with that. I see it as complementing it. And to be honest, when you're a Marine player, you almost can't have too many Redemptor Dreadnoughts or too many Dreadnoughts in general. It's like telling a guard player he's got too many tanks. It just doesn't compute. Finally, we have that Lieutenant. Now, some of you may be surprised that I'm suggesting a Lieutenant again when there is one that comes in the starter box. But the one that comes in the star box is a Phobos Lieutenant, so he's a little bit more specialized. Even if you do end up using him as a generic Lieutenant, it's not a bad idea to pick up an extra one anyway. Simply because Space Marine characters are so interchangeable. If someone was to put an official Games Workshop Lieutenant down in front of me and said, I'm going to use this as a Captain today, I wouldn't even know the difference. A Space Marine character running around with a power sword and a pistol it's just a generic character. Some days he can be a lieutenant, some days he can be a captain. So picking up a model that can be used as multiple different HQ choices and is generic enough to get away with it is not a bad choice. That covers the units I'd recommend for all Space Marine chapters. I know there are many different kinds of Space Marine, but they're all specialized in their own way and we're trying to avoid specialized recommendations. However, there are two specialized chapters of Marines I am going to give some attention to. The Death Watch and the Grey Knights. For the Grey Knights, I recommend you buy Strike Marines and also Dread Knights. Both of those units have been good for the Grey Knights since 5th edition, and I honestly don't see that changing. For the Death Watch, it's a little bit trickier. I would avoid things like the Corvus Black Star. It has very much come in and out of fashion. When it comes to your kill teams, I think it's going to come down to personal preference. I don't see GW getting rid of the firstborn kill teams. That's actually a relatively new kit and it's very distinctive and different from the Primaris one. So when it comes to Death Watch, stick to your line infantry and pick whichever you prefer, firstborn or Primaris. Next up, we have the Adeptus Custodes. Yes, the golden light of the Emperor. Yeah, the golden banana boys that guard the rotting corpse on the throne. Yes, Commissar, this video right here. Recommending units for Custodes is really easy because I've only got about two anyway. But the two that I would recommend is your normal Custodian guard, your standard troop choice. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. You guys know at this point why taking standard troops is good. And I'd also recommend the bikers or the Virtus Praetors. The guys riding around on the giant golden jet bikes. They're the ones that you also want to take a look at. They've always been decent. Sometimes they've been extremely meta and spammable. And sometimes they've just been good. But they've never been bad. The good thing about those guys as well is you can use them to represent your characters. Like your Custodius Captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike. 
Next on the assembly line, we have the wacky waving and flailing, flailing cogman of the Imperium. It's the Adeptus Mechanicus. Honestly, with these guys, I just suggest getting the combat patrol or most of the units in it. It comes with Skitari, they're your basic troops. It comes with an Onaga Dune Crawler. It's your quintessential main battle tank. And it comes with a Tech Priest. Now, the regular Tech Priest, he's a little bit bland. He's pretty much a minor character. And you might be better off going with something like the Tech Priest Dominus, who is your bigger, badder Tech Priest. And he's probably more of a safe bet. But honestly, if you're just starting out, a tech priest is a tech priest. Whether he's the engine seer, the dominus, or the manipulus, it's fine. So I think the start collecting or the combat patrol is a really good way to go. The only unit in the combat patrol which I'm not a big fan of, which you might want to avoid, which might mean you want to buy things in their separate constituent parts, is the combat servitors. They have been amazing in some editions, and they have been unusably bad. Like you can get them on eBay for almost a pound per model, like a 90% discount bad. So they have waxed and waned to both extreme ends of the spectrum. But the Combat Patrol as a whole is still pretty good. And like I said, the other units in it are definitely recommended. Next up, we have the Adeptus Sororitas, the Scissors of Battle, ready to serve. And these girls are super easy to recommend. Just buy the Battle Sister box. It's such a good kit. It can build almost any infantry in your army. It's one of my favorites. You can use it to build basic sisters, but it comes with all the special weapons you're ever going to need for your Celestines and also for your Dominions. And it comes with heavy flamers and heavy bolters, so you can even use it to build retributors. On top of this, it's got such a variety of parts and poses that you can use it to make all of your different characters as well, from your Imagifiers to your Hospitallers. Also, you've got your Palantines and your Canonesses. It's just a really good box and more than enough to keep you busy until 10th edition comes around. After this, we start getting into some of the fringe elements of the Imperial Armies. Your Knights, your Inquisition and your Officio Assassinorum. Inquisition and Assassinorum are by definition very, very specialised. I wouldn't pick up any of those units unless you wanted them just as a collection piece. I would also say it might be best to avoid buying any Imperial Knights for the time being as well. Knights are an army that really do come and go out of season, out of fashion. And so if you're really, really desperate to get a Knight though, if you really want that big stompy robot in your army, the one I would go for is the Knight Paladin. It's the one that comes with a gun on one arm and a chainsword on the other. He has been a bedrock. He is the original knight for that faction before you had all the other crazy ones he was the og and so he's always going to have a place in your knight army i would avoid the really big ones like the castellan because they are by nature specialized and likewise on the other spectrum i would avoid the war dogs to be clear this advice on knights applies both to their imperial versions and also to the chaotic heretic versions as well but speaking of the Dark Gods, next up we have the Chaos Factions and we're going to begin with the Chaos Demons. Now I'm just going to be straight with you. I don't know that much about demons. They seem to pop onto the meta and then they pop off to the meta. I occasionally come across someone who is a dedicated demon player, but then they seem to have every different kind of entity under the warp. So rather than me giving you some bad advice and telling you to go out and buy some specific units i'm going to say one thing if you really really like demons and you're really into a certain god be it nurgle or slanesh or zinch then just buy the units that you like for that god if you're listening to this video right now and you are a dedicated demon player or you know a lot about them firstly obviously report the inquisition but secondly give some advice down in the comment section below and if you're listening to this right now and you are interested in, de in demons please check out that comment section because i guarantee you've got a really lovely community here and i guarantee that someone would have put out down there some really really good advice but moving on to the mortal followers of the chaos gods it is the heretic astartes now for these guys i would recommend two units firstly the legionnaires and secondly the chaos terminators both of these 
are pretty staple units for the faction. And what's great about them is you can use them not only to build your line infantry and your elite shock troops, but also use them to build all sorts of characters. With a little bit of green stuff and conversion work or just a fancy paint scheme, you can turn a Chaos Space Green Sergeant into a Chaos Lord or a Spiring Champion. And likewise, you can do the same thing with the Terminators as well. It just means that you've got a couple of units that you can sink your teeth into and wet your whistle whilst you wait for the new edition to come around. And the best bit is you can apply that logic to several other traitor legions as well, including your Thousand Sons and your Death Guard. Your Thousand Sons, Rupert Marines, Scarborough Colts, and for your Death Guard, you want to be looking at Plague Marines and probably Blight Lords, Death Shroud are a bit more specialised. In addition for the Death Guard, I would recommend Poxwalkers. Firstly, who doesn't like zombies? And secondly, They've traditionally always weirdly been pretty good, and sometimes they've actually been downright full-blown meta-breakingly competitive. Even if they don't end up being that good again, you can't really go wrong with having some cheap cannon fodder in your force. It's what a lot of marine armies actually struggle with. And even if you end up just having them sitting on an objective and holding it for a turn whilst the rest of your army goes off and smashes face, you can do it with a cheap unit of poxwalkers rather than having to sit there with a unit of terminators. As for World Eaters, well, it's very straightforward. Berserkers, Berserkers, and more Berserkers. If you wanted to add a bit of variety into your life, maybe go for the Combat Patrol, but it's kind of hard to go wrong with them, considering as a standalone faction, they only have about a dozen units anyway. But that covers all of the dirty heretic factions. Now let's have a look at the foul Xenos ones. And as is typical with the alien, it cannot be trusted. And the first faction we're going to take a look at is the Trixius of them all. And it's actually the hardest to give any advice about. It's the Eldari. By definition, these guys are specialists. Each unit being very good at one particular role. This means that as additions come and go, certain units in their roster go from being top tier to bottom tier. And it is actually kind of hard to say, go out and just get this particular thing. Like with the demons, I would hate to give you some bad advice based on my ignorant monkey tiny brain. So the best thing I can probably do is refer you down to the comment section and hopefully there'll be some more veteran Eldar players there that can steer you new guardians forward. But if I was to give you some very high level advice, I would think about getting some units like your Guardians and also your tanks such as the Falcon and the Wave Serpents. The reason I recommend these two things is because Guardians are a pretty good base template for a lot of other units. You can build them as normal Guardians, you could convert them into Storm Guardians, and also you could paint them blue and have them as Dire Avengers. And similarly, the Falcon and the Wave Serpent, and to a certain extent, the Fire Prism and the Night Spinner, they're all based on that same fundamental hover tank chassis. And essentially, you just put a different turret on top. It's kind of like the difference between a Lehman Rust bow tank and a Lehman Rust exterminator and a Lehman Rust demolisher. It's all a Lehman Rust at the end of the day. It's just got a different gun on top. So even though, by definition, the faction is pretty specialized, I can recommend those units because it's easy enough with a turret swap or a different paint scheme to essentially cover multiple bases with these guys. Fortunately for my tiny Ogren brain, the Drukhari are much easier to recommend. Like the Admech, by the Combat Patrol, it's got all your staple units in it. And Drukhari, they're just all about infantry and skimmers. And this thing comes with loads of infantry and loads of skimmers. So that's your safest bet. Likewise, when it comes to Gene Silicult, if you want to get something before 10th, and to be honest, you'll probably keep buying this box when you go into 10th, it's the Combat Patrol. It comes with everything you need. Loads of cannon fodder near fights, acolytes that could be turned into metamorphs as well, and even a pinch of armor. However, I would not recommend the Necron Combat Patrol. Every unit in that thing is specialized. Instead, I'd pick up some warriors. Can't go wrong with them, and you actually get two units in the box. You get the warriors, and you get the cute little scarves as well. So it's a two for one. Side note for our veteran hobbyists, if you're comfortable with magnetizing, Necrons are essentially a two for one on every box. For example, when you buy your Immortals, it's going to come with the parts for Death Marks as well. That means that if you can 
happily magnetize all the different bits, you can pretty much pick up whatever Necron box you want. Because if option A isn't any good, option B probably will be. Up next, we have the green-skinned menace, the football hooligans in space. It is the Orcs. These guys are super easy to recommend. Buy boys and buy lots of them. The reason you want to buy boys is because they can be converted and kitbashed into almost any other Orc infantry in your army. With a little bit of green stuff and some extra gubbins, you can turn that big shooter guy into a looter. That rocket shooter guy into a tank buster. You can have orcs that are armed with chopper and pistol, and you can have orcs that are armed with shooter. Basically, if you buy lots of orc boys and build up a nice spare bits pile, you'll be good for the new addition because you can build them as almost any infantry that you're going to need. Next up, we have the blue skinned menace. It's the Tau Empire. These guys are a little tricky to recommend because their meta has shifted all over the place since their inception in 3rd edition. However, I would recommend three units. The first one is Fire Warriors. They're good because they're your standard infantryman. They're good because you can use them to build certain characters like Fireblades. And they're also good because they can just be used as Pathfinders as well. If you give a Fire Warrior a Pulse Carbine in one game, he can be a Fire Warrior. In the next, he can be a Pathfinder. In a similar sort of vein, I would suggest the Hammerhead. Not only is it an iconic unit for the faction, but it can also be used as a devil fish. And if you get a spare turret, you could even potentially have it as a sky ray as well. The last tower unit I'm going to talk about is the riskiest one, but I'm going to say crisis suits. They've definitely had their times in the sun. They've also had their time in Hades. The reason I am talking about them is because you can use them for multiple different units, crisis suits, bodyguards or commanders. Also, they come with every weapon option under the sun. So if you're happy magnetizing them, you can swap out your burst cannons for your plasma or your fusion, whatever ends up being the best option for 10th. I'd also like to do an honorable mention to the Riptide. Yes, it's a big unit. Yes, it's specialized. But these things have been amazing for the past three editions. We then get to the Tyranids. And it's kind of a funny one because I was going to suggest you pick up Termagants and Carnifexes. But Games Workshop is releasing new Termagants and they're releasing the Screamer Killer as part of Leviathan. So we know that there's going to be a lot of models getting a range refresh. So what I would traditionally say is wait until the range refresh comes out and then you know which models are going to be new, which ones are going to be old, and you can avoid buying old models that end up just getting replaced by better looking ones. But then I realized that Tyranids are in the new star box. There's going to be a lot of people hyped up for them. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to know what they can get and not have to wait till the box arrives. So here's my general advice for Tyranids. Can't go wrong with having a good swarm. Be it of Hormigants or of Termigants, you can't go wrong with a good swarm. Also, the good thing is that the old Termigants and the new Termigants do look pretty similar. And if you mix them all together, you will probably won't be able to tell the difference between the old ones and the new ones. Interestingly, it doesn't look like Hormigants at the time of recording are going to be getting a new model. So that might be another good direction for you to go in. And also, whilst Games Workshop is releasing the Screamer Killer, they have officially stated that it is not replacing the old Khan effects and that the Screamer Killer is, is its own separate unit. Therefore, if you're comfortable with having a mixture of new and old Termigants and you're comfortable with having the Screamer Killer alongside his smaller cousin, I would still recommend you go for your small bugs and you also go for some Khan effects. Last and certainly least because of their small stature, yeah, you can put that in the Book of Grudges. We've got the Votan. Votan are a hard faction to recommend units for because they've only been out a very short time and they have no historical precedence. I know World Eaters have been out even less, but at least they've got some historical precedence. They've been pure mono World Eater armies before, even if they used the Chaos Space Spring Codex. Votan, we have none of that. We don't know what was good in the past, what's been bad in the past or anything like that. But fortunately, Votan also have a very limited roster. So it's kind of hard to pick a bad unit. I would suggest tentatively 
that you couldn't go wrong with a box or two of the Halfkin Warriors, simply because, as we've stated many times, it's basic line infantry. It's always going to be a home for them. And I would also suggest very, very tentatively the Hecaton Land Fortress. You only have one big tanky unit. It is the Hecaton. And whether it's good or not, you're probably going to want some anyway just because they look so cool. And they are, even with Rotan's relatively limited history in 40k, the most iconic unit they have. But honestly... Just getting completely down to brass tacks. I think when it comes to Votan, we've got to apply the platinum rule. Just buy the units you like and make sure they're the ones that you're not going to regret. And hopefully they'll be good in the new edition. And if they're not, well, at least you'll still have some really cool space dwarfs. And that, ladies, gentlemen, and small furry creatures from Alpha Centauri is every single faction covered and all of the units I would recommend for 10th edition. But remember, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Do you collect a certain faction and you think there's a unit that I should have included in my recommendations? Put it down in that comment section and share it with your fellow players. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. If you found today's video particularly helpful and informative or just a ton of fun, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon. By becoming a supporter, you will gain access to loads of different perks, you'll be supporting the channel, and you'll also be able to join the Mordian Glory Discord, which is an online community of well over a thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord, and we've got channels talking about 10th edition, army lists, hobbying, painting, and we've even got a pretty spicy meme channel as well. And I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members. So thank you to Nope Maybe, Dean Walker, Alti Bacon, Rake Knight, Lewis Fisher Wells, Rowan Finch, Peback Central, Rotten Dot, Dakota Templaris, Sven Bockman, Alex Morell, A Belly of an Army, The Randomo Guy, Hot Coleman, Dan Gad, Jonas Ori, Potato217, and Stephen Taylor. Thank you guys for doing your part. I also want to shout out the latest Patreons as well. So a big thank you to Jeff Silverbloom, Sven Langbeen, Captain Neverscared, Deathcore Commander, and Peter Stella. Last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are my war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Alan Blunt III, Bon Bon Vert, Mark Panconi, Ridemaster 134-1, Ross Miller, Sawfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Thank you to all of you guys. Your incredibly generous support makes a huge difference and it's a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full-time. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.